Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I am delighted to show you a variation of the waffle stitch. This is the waffle stitch blanket, but instead of it being done in rows, back and forth, back and forth, it's done in rounds. It is a two round repeat. It's very, very simple. And the texture is to die for. Absolutely love it. It's very squishy. Yes, squishy. Um, now, the only thing that you really need to be aware of, though, is that it is a bit of a yarn hog. Yes, because it is so textured and squishy. Yeah, it, it does tend to eat up yarn a little bit faster than one would like. However, I think it's worth it in the long run. Now, for this particular piece, which I love, um, this was done in Karen Big Cakes not sponsored and <laughs> i uh well i used four skeins cakes skeins whatever four of them in the colorway of cranberry crisp mm -hmm. now this makes a nice sized throw blanket if you want to go bigger well be sure to get plenty of yarn the exact number of yards that you'll need well eh, kind of a gray area quite frankly by the way as far as the yardage for this particular yarn, let's see, where is it? Where is it listed? Where is it listed? Okay, so the yardage, 603 yards per cake. And like I said, I used four of them, you know, if that gives you any indication. Now for me, I would say this is, you know, a good lap blanket, you know, a, a small afghan, if you will. However, if you want something for a full-sized bed, load up, you know, Always safer to buy more than you think you're going to need than run out. Um, but I love how this worked out. Now, for this particular yarn, which is a weight of four, it's a little bit on the heavy side, if you will. I used a size J, 6.00, well, 6.0 millimeter hook um, for this particular blanket because I didn't want it to be too tight um, because it is, you know, very textured. Now today, I'm going to be using some Pound of Love in the colorway of taupe, and I'm going to use a size I crochet hook because this is quite a bit thinner. So without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, so we're going to start with a slip knot. Now I was inspired to do this piece because I had done the waffle stitch shawl before, and I thought if I can do a triangle, well, maybe I can do a square. And I have seen blankets like this before, but I never actually looked at any of the patterns. I just thought to myself, well, I can figure it out, and I think I have. So after your slip knot, we're going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. And then slip stitch to the first chain to create a ring. And this is going to be very similar to starting a granny square, which, yes, you know I love the granny squares, but with a slight variation. So we're going to start by chaining up three, one, two, three, and then double crochet into the ring just once. Yeah, that is going to be our initial cluster, just two double crochets. All right, and then for the corners, Typically, you would do two or three chains for a granny square. This time, only one chain. Now, I know you're thinking that doesn't seem like a lot, but you don't want these large gaping holes at your corners for this particular piece. So one chain, I feel, worked out just fine. So we've got a chaining of a three, a double crochet, and a chain one. Well, into that same center space two double crochets and we need a total of four of these sort of mini clusters if you will so chain one and then into the center ring two more doubles and i did a lot of experimentation as far as the number of chains so Personally, I feel that, yes, a chain one will be sufficient. All right, chain one, and then two more double crochets into that center ring. Chain two, 
chain one. And then last but not least, going to do a slip stitch into the top third chain right there of our first chaining up of three, our first double crochet. Do a slip stitch like so. And that is the end of the first round. Now, it does seem a little bit odd, a little bit cramped, but that will change, believe you me. So to get to the end of the actual round, we're gonna slip stitch into the next stitch and then into the corner space like so. And that is the official end of round one. Alrighty, round two. Now I'm not doing the, the whole click, clicky clicky, uh, you know, stitch row counter thingy because um, it's just a two round repeat. So going to chain up three, one, two, three, then turn the work and into these two double crochets, we're going to do front post double crochets. And that's one of the things that I love about this pattern is that there are no back post double crochets, just front post double crochets. And I think I got a little ahead of myself. I want to show you exactly what I'm doing as far as the front post. I just sort of take it for granted that people know what I'm talking about. So basically it's as if you're going to do a regular double, but instead of going into the top of the stitch, you're going behind the post and grabbing your yarn, pulling it up and then through. So this is a front post double crochet and we need another one right here. So we've got our two front post double crochets, right? And then into this corner space, double crochet, chain one, and in that same space, double crochet. There you go. And then we're going to do the same thing with these two double crochets, two front post double crochets. And it's a little bit fiddly to begin with, but after a while you will get used to it. Just, just stick with it. All right, so from here, we've reached the corner. So into the corner, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. All right, then two more front post, double crochet stitches. And then into this corner, double crochet, chain one and double crochet. All right. And then two more front post double crochets. Okay, and we've reached the end. Now, after doing your two front post double crochets into the corner space, do a double crochet, a chaining of one, and then we need to slip stitch to the top of our first double crochet. Like so. There you go. And that is the end of round two. Now, yes, I know this looks a little bit wonky, but bear with me, we will get there. Alrighty. All right, so for the next round, I mean, I didn't do anything since round two. Um, for the next round, we are again going to turn the work and slip stitch back into this chain space slip stitch right in there. And so if you notice, we do have the the beginning of our waffle. Um, when we did our front post on the opposite side, they become back post on the right side of the piece. So you can see 
these two stitches in between, those become back posts and these become front posts. It'll make more sense as we go on. So basically in each corner, we only have two, one on each side. Well, right now we need uh, two on each side. We need a total of four, okay? But in order to start, what we need to do is half of the first cluster. This will make more sense as I go, as I go on, trust me. So what we need to do is a chaining up of four. That's going to count as a double crochet and a chaining of one. So one, two, three, four. And then into the same space, two double crochets. Just trust me, this will make sense as we go on. You know, it's going to seem a little bit weird, but we will get there. All right, so we did our two doubles. Now the next double crochet is going to be a front post double crochet. There we go, because it needs to pop. You see? Then the next two are going to be regular double crochets, one in each. And then another front post double crochet. All right, so we've reached the corner space. So that's going to be two doubles, chain one, two doubles into that chain one space. It'll seem a little bit crowded, but you want it to be, believe it or not. So I got my two doubles, my chain one, and I need two more doubles. Okay. So from here, front post, double crochet that first one, and then two regular double crochets. And then a front post. And we've reached the corner again. So that will be two doubles, chain one, two doubles. Okay. And then going to do a front post and then two regular doubles. And then another front post. And yep, we've reached the corner once again. So two doubles, chain one, two doubles. All right, so I got my two doubles, chain one, and two doubles. Okay. And then we need a front post. And then two regular doubles. And then the stitch down here is going to be another front post. And then when we started at this corner here, we did, it was a double crochet, a chain one, and then two double crochets. Well, we need one more double crochet into this chain space right here. And now we have two double crochets, a chain one and two double crochets, but we need to do a slip stitch to the top third chain. Now, an easy way of determining that it's like you've got your chain one space, well then just slip stitch into the next chain right here. And then slip stitch into the chain space. So I got a, a mini waffle. <laughs> Alrighty, so we shall continue on to the next round. 
All right, so I didn't change anything. I didn't turn anything since the, the last clip. Um, what we're going to do now is we are going to chain up three. One, two, three. Turn the work. Now, again, it's a matter of alternating whether it's uh, starting with one or starting with, you know, the, the two, because we've got two here. Well, then we need one here. Okay. You know, so it would be like one on each side or two on each side. Well, we need one on each side. So you start with the chaining of three. And then these two double crochets, well, these two front post double crochets, if you will, will continue to be front post double crochets. Um, it's basically what we did in the the second round. All right, so what we're going to do is do front post, and then another front post. If I don't get caught on my yarn. There we go. And then the next stitch is going to be a regular double crochet into the top of that stitch. And then two front post double crochets. And then another regular double crochet. And then another two front post double crochets. Now, before I go on, I want to show you that, you know, this is how it looks on the wrong side. Now, on the right side, when you turn it over, you'll see that the front post double crochets that we were doing are back post double crochets on the right side, and the regular doubles become front posts on the right side. So it's all a matter of, you know, figuring out the inversion in your head and not letting it confuse you too much. But I wanted to show you what is actually going on. So from here, we just did our two front posts while well, we reached the corner. So it's a double chain one double into the corner space. There we go. And then back to the routine of two, whoops, two front posts. And then a regular double. And then two front posts. And then a regular double. Two front posts. And then into the corner, double, chain one, double. All right, so again, it's going to be two front posts, regular, two front posts, regular, two front posts, and then we'll be at the corner again. You know, it's all about the rhythm. So I got two front posts, and then a regular double crochet, and then two front posts. And then a regular and two front posts and then a double chain one and double into the corner space and we are almost to the beginning all right so let's do it to it all right front post, front post, regular double, 
front post, front post, regular double, front post, front post, and then into the corner, double crochet, chain one, and slip stitch to the top of our first chaining up of three. And there we go. Now this is the back side, so yes, it looks a tad wonky. However, when you turn it over, oh, it's, I just want some butter and syrup. Oh, I love it. Love it. It looks great. All right. So we shall continue on because you know I like to do a couple of repeats for you guys. All righty. All right, so for the next round, we're going to turn the work. Now, basically, I mean, you could say instead of, you know, round one or round two, um, so on the, the wrong side facing you, it's, you know, one double crochet, chain one, one double crochet in each corner. However, on the side that's facing you, the right side, okay, going to slip stitch into that corner space, and we need two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets. But again, we need to start by doing a chaining of four. So it's starting, you know, the, the one cluster, and then just doing the other one. So one, two, three, four, two double crochets. So we have sort of a cluster and a half in our corner. I find that this works out pretty well, at least I thought so. So from here, we have our raised doubles that are alone. We've got one, two, three, and four of those. And then we've got our regular pairings of doubles in the back. So we're going to do those. So going to start by doing a front post and then two regular doubles because they need to recede backwards and then another front post to pop it out and then two regulars to recede and then a front post to pop two regulars to recede and then a front post. Okay, then in the corner, two doubles, chain one, two doubles. Now, as far as yarn choice, I would suggest um, either a solid color or one that has a like a slow change variation like the one that I used for my example, I would not suggest using a variegated yarn that has a quick color change. Otherwise, you know, this is going to get very lost. It could get very muddled unless if you're using a variegated that um, has colors that really do go well together. I would say experiment, you know, play with it around a bit, you know, make some swatches um, by all means. You know, otherwise you might end up with something that looks like, you know, confetti. I don't know. Um, so from here, we did our two doubles, chain one, two doubles. Well, we need to do a front post right here. And then two regulars. And then a front post. And then two regulars. You know, really, whenever I talk about color choices, as far as your color ways of yarn, they are suggestions, you know. It is by no means the end all be all um, by any stretch of the imagination. No, it's it's just you know me suggesting. So from here we need a front post and then two regulars. Personally, I find this also to be a lot easier than say the uh, the basket weave because with that you need back posts and those annoy me to no end. All right, so we've got our uh, front post, two regulars, our front post, and then in the corner, two doubles, chain one, two doubles, just as we have been. And 
and then proceed on by doing a front post and then two regulars and then a front post and two more regulars front post two regulars and a front post and then into the corner two doubles chain one two doubles see after a while you get into the swing of it no oh, it it flies like a bird all right so after doing my two doubles chain one two doubles all right back to doing a front post and then two doubles front post two doubles front post two doubles and pull out some more yarn naturally okay i got one double i need one more double all right and then down here we grab this one do a front post all right and then we need to finish up because we had our two doubles here but we have only one here so again into the space do a double and then slip stitch to the top third chain you just skip the one right here and go into that next one like so and slip stitch and then slip stitch into the yeah. chain one space all right all right all right all right all right so we are going to do another you know another row and we shall proceed all righty so from here well we're going to need to chain up three one two three because remember we just did a round where there's two on each side well we need one on each side so i'm going to start with our chaining up of three turn the work and then going to do two front post double crochets like so and then a regular double and it's just going to flip flop back and forth so it's two fronts one regular two fronts one regular all the way across this side so that's two front posts one regular and then two front posts and one regular two front posts oh hello All right, and then one regular, two front posts, and then we are in the corner space. So that's a double, chain one, and a double. All right, and then follow suit along this side. So again, it is two front posts and then a regular, two front posts and pull out some more yarn. There we go. All right, so I got my two front posts. 
and now I need a regular double two front posts and a regular two front posts it's so rhythmic <laughs> and then a regular two front posts and then a regular chain one and a regular because we're in the corner all right two front posts and then a regular two front posts and then a regular two fronts and a ridge two fronts and a reg or do you prefer reg <laughs> You know, it's just, it's, it's the same thing over and over, which, you know, it's one of those great pieces for that sort of mindful stitching. Well, I'm in the corner, so I need to do a double, chain one, and then a double. You know, you can totally get lost working on this piece. It's fabulous, and it's, it's so squishy. All right, so now we're on the last side. So, two front posts. And a regular two front posts and another regular two fronts. You could say two fronts and a back, you know, because it's sort of receding backwards, you know even though it's not a back post double crochet. Keep that in mind. There's a very different thing. All right, so two fronts. Okie dokie. And then a, whoops, and a regular. And then two front posts. And we've reached the corner once again. So that next one is going to be a double crochet, chain one, and slip stitch to the top of that first chaining of three. Like so. All right. And then, you know, if you were to continue, you would, of course, turn your work and realize how beautiful it is. Now, you would realize um, that in each corner, you know, you've got uh, just a double on each side. So what you would need to do, of course, would be to slip stitch into the corner, chain up four, and then do two more double crochets. Come on. <laughs> two more double crochets because you need two doubles, a chain one and two doubles. But of course, when you're first starting, it's a little bit different. So from here, you would continue on, of course, by doing a front post and then two regulars so that they recede back and then a front post and then two regulars, if I can manage. Alrighty. That's two regulars. And then a front post. Oh, oh, oh. See, I think I need one of those yarn balls. <laughs> 
rather difficult, but I try to make do. I really do. There we go. Just keep pulling out some more yarn. Sorry, folks. All right, so then another regular double. And then a front post. And then two doubles in the back. And then a front post. And then two doubles in the back. And then a front post. And then of course, when you reach the corner, two doubles, chain one, two doubles. And you would keep going, you know, I mean, that's really all there is to it. Now, of course, you could end on either row. It really does not make a difference. But I think that this is a fabulous little pattern, and I encourage you to try it. This would be especially great for the cold season because this is really warm and squishy and lovely, and I love it. Oh, yes, I do. So listen, if you like this tutorial, please give a little thumbs up button down below. Please show your support. And also, uh, you know, leave some comments. You know, let me know what you think. And uh, if you haven't hit subscribe, please do so. Um, I also have a, another YouTube channel, Fiber Spider Games. Would like to see you there. And, you know, until next time, I want all of you to have a fabulous day. And you know what to do. Stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.